Welcome to Becoming Church on this Easter Sunday. Hope you guys are excited. Benet has us all ready to get out of here because she talked about all the food that we're going to get to eat after this is over with. Um, but if you'll give me just like um, 30 minutes of your time, 35, 30, 35 minutes of your time, I want to talk to you about um, the promise that's found in Jesus. And so it's Easter Sunday. That's kind of when... Um, you know, most people are like, hey, I got to go to church on Easter or I got to go to church on Christmas. And, and for whatever reason you're here, whether this is your church home, you're coming to check us out or somebody talked to you into coming, here's what you need to know. Um, we're um, honored that you're, you're with us and um, God is excited that you're here. And um, he wants to do something in your heart that maybe you totally unexpect. Um, that you came and went, hey, I'm just going to come and hang out and then I'm going to go to uh, Easter lunch or dinner with my family. It's going to be a great day. And it is going to be a great day because I believe uh, with everything in me that God's going to touch you, speak to you, move on you in a way that maybe um, you were not anticipating and, and maybe in some ways not ready for. Um, because when God um, plans on moving, he always does more than we could think, dream, or imagine um, according to the power at work in us. So just um, if you would bow your heads all over the auditorium, I want to pray for us as we start today um, and talk about some deep things that we struggle with. God, thank you um, for allowing us to be here today, sir. Thank you for making a way where there seemed to be no way for humanity, that we were broken and sinful and without hope until hope came, and his name is Jesus. So may every heart be stirred by the power of your Holy Spirit today. Do um, what you do, sir. Preach a better word than I can and move on people and lead and guide them to wisdom, truth, life, and freedom. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen. Amen. We're going to start in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4 today, verse 16. So just a little short blurb, and then I'm going to jump to John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, and just um, share some good news with you today. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Dude, dope. All right. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. If I say shadows. shadows. Have you ever um, seen anybody, usually a little kid, or maybe it's your pet? How many of you have pets in here? A dog? Anybody? Okay, cats are from the devil, so it's not a pet. Um, if you want to do something cool to do, get a laser light, put it on the floor, run it around, drive your cat crazy, and then run it to the wall and smash his head right in the wall. It's the greatest thing. Ever. Just kidding. Don't do that. Anyway, so look. So uh, maybe I say shadows. Have you ever seen somebody walking along and like, like they see their shadow and it startles them? They're like, what's, what's that? Especially, I have seen dogs do this from time to time. A totally unathletic dog can leap 10 feet in the air if it ever catches its shadow just, just, just because. Like it just sees it. Um, the cool thing about shadows though, in order for there to be a shadow, there has to be what? Light. What? Light. There has to be light in order for there to be a shadow. And while darkness cannot exist in the presence of light, um, because Jesus said he is the light to all men, that he came to dispel the darkness. A shadow can. A shadow can, can be because of the light. And there, there are things that are on the inside of every human that we wish wasn't there. And um, psychology calls that the shadow self. Carl Jung, who um, kind of coined this phrase, writes this. It's a frightening thought that a man also has a shadow side to him consisting not just of little weaknesses or quirks, but of a dark energy. The individual seldom, seldom knows anything of this. To him as an individual, it is incredible that he should ever, in any circumstance, go beyond himself. But let these harmless creatures form a mass, and there emerges a raging monster. Beneath all the social masks that you and I put on, there is this side of us that we believe that we can keep hidden forever, that we can kind of keep it refrained and pushed down and held back, and it is a side of us that often is sad and depressed and angry and, and can, if allowed, can get out of hand. How many Christ followers in here following Jesus for a year or two, and then you do something, and there's some, some part of you that comes out that you thought wasn't there anymore? Anybody? You're like, where did that come from? Everybody say shadow. shadow. It's the shadow. It's the thing that actually the light wants to dispel, but we don't let it. And if you're in here 
and you ha- you've not decided to cross the line of faith, maybe you're checking it out for whatever reason you're here, but you haven't like surrendered your life to Jesus, you haven't given your life to Christ, you haven't made that decision, um, your shadow struggle is a little bit greater than those who follow Christ. I'm not saying that the shadow completely goes away forever and ever. It's kind of always there because we're always growing in the grace and knowledge of Christ. We're always kind of um, being sanctified is the big, the big church word. And all that means is I'm going to be more like Jesus tomorrow than I am today. And what you want to get, you want to get to a place where the light shines so brightly that my shadows have almost no power. That, that little voice that you don't know where it comes from, how many you know what I'm talking about? Like you hear that voice, like it begins to dissipate almost all together. But there are a group of people who have a really tough time with those shadows. And the reason we have such a tough time with those shadows is because we exist in this, this, um, this arena of life where, let's say you have a love-hate relationship. How do you know what I'm talking about? Like there's, there's parts of me that I rest in that I actually hate. How do you have parts of you you just dislike? Like you know they're there and you hope nobody ever sees them, but they're there and you dislike them very much, but the truth is you kind of love them too. You know what I'm talking about? Like there's this, there's this side of me that I wish wasn't there and I wish, man, I hope nobody ever sees it. How many, how many of you ever let that side out in traffic? Anybody? Like some people saw that side of you because you told them they were number one. And, and you, like, wanted to invite them to pull over to have a discussion about their driving ability. And, and you might have even prayed, Lord, if you could just let them pull in the same gas station as me, this would be a great opportunity to lay hands on them. You just had this whole conversation with this shadow. Like, you know it. How many of you know that's not the voice of the Lord? But it sure is loud. And, like, it's like, woo. Have you ever had a kid just go haywire? And you, like... Wanted to whip them. All the parents. There's a few of you parents going, yes. There's a couple of parents stiff like. <laughs> Man, DHR is right over there. What you talking about? Yeah, be quiet. Like, we all think it. Like, right? It's like, how many of you ever, how many of you grew up in a, in a home where you just got whippings on Saturday because? <laughs> like, I didn't catch you do it this week, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Like, there's this. There's this side that's like, what? How do I? Th- how have you ever thought something with? Where did that come from? Like I had these thoughts that you're shocked you can think, or these visions of things you'd like to do that are just not right. Like this, this, this side of you. That can get to a place literally where you think about harming somebody for real. That you think about divorce is probably easier. That you think about, even though you've been free from drugs for 10 years, that little voice is still there. The shadow that lurks, we're in the light, but the shadow is there and I want so badly to get free from it. And you know what's, you know what's terrible? Is we hate that part of us, but how do you know we kind of like it? Like I, I don't, man I, man, I hate the fact that I can get so angry, but the truth is I kind of like it too. Man, can't believe I still struggle with lust, but the truth is I kind of like the fact that I struggle with lust. Man, I can't believe I could even be capable of that, but the truth is I kind of like the fact that I can be capable of that. The question is, is can we ever really be free from it? Is there there something that can happen on the inside of us that goes beyond some kind of cool, smart psychology trick where I'm just pretending to be somebody, but the truth is I know inside I'm not that person? That somehow the one that we portray and the one that we are can line up and actually have a holistic life, a peaceful life, a free life. Jesus actually offers us the opportunity to be free of that person. Here's here's what you have to do, though. You have to decide that even though I love this person 
And I like it when I want to access it. And I can justify it. You have to fall out of love with this person and the person that's on the other side of this door. You got to love that potential way more than you love the struggle. And it's so weird. They're like, no, no, I don't love the struggle. Yes, you do. I do. Because you know what this person tells me? Who I am. Like, really, who I am? And Jesus says this, Truly I say to you, the one who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But the one who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep listen to his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts all his own sheep outside, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. However, a stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Verse 6. Jesus told them this figure of speech, but they did not understand what the things which he was saying meant. You ever read anything in the Bible and just wondered, what the heck does that mean? This, you're no different than the disciples. They were listening to Jesus tell this little parable story, analogy, and they're like, I have no idea what that means. You ever tell your kids something and they look at you like you're crazy? Like you, you, it's just some profound, deep wisdom that you know they're going to need because you've, you've done that, got the T-shirt, and you're like, just let me help you out. And they go, like you're the biggest idiot on the planet? How many of you would like to be the son of the living God and you're training up 12 dudes to change the whole world and you tell them a parable and they go, I don't even know what you're talking about. You're like, guys, I raised the dead. Listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, that's really, I don't know what you're saying. So he has to explain it to them. So Jesus said to them again, truly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All those who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. And we'll go out and in and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that you would have life and life abundantly. Jesus says, I'm the door. And he even goes on to say later, anybody who knocks, I will answer. That you can enter through this door and you can have a new life. But the problem is, we like it over here. And even though it is a love-hate relationship, and we all know what we're talking, what I'm talking about, we're afraid to give this up. Because who will I be without these shadows? Because you have been talked into a lie that these actually can serve you, that these actually can help you, that it's be you are the person you are right now because of these dark places. You know what I would tell you? That's true. You are absolutely who you are right now because of the shadows. And you don't want to be that person. You're not satisfied with that person. You know what that person's capable of. You know what that person thinks. And you don't want anybody to know it. So you shove the shadows away and you put on a face and you pretend like they're not there. And God is telling you the only way to free yourself of the shadows is to expose them to the light. You have to face them. You have to be vulnerable enough to God and to maybe somebody else to say, this is what I think in the dark places. This is what grasps me in the night. I don't want to be that person. Well, then you have to decide, I don't love this person more than I love the person I could be. And the only way to there is through the door called Jesus. But look, if you've never made that decision with Christ, I understand how scary that can be. Like, I get it. And if you're here and you have given your life to Christ, but you're still hanging on to the shadows, I understand that as well. The first person who has never walked through this door, here's your, I don't know what's on the other side. It doesn't matter how many people explain it to you. There used to be a game show. I don't remember what it was called, but they had like three doors. And you had to pick like door number one, door number two, or door number three. And you never knew what was on the other side of the door. Sometimes you open the door, pick door number one, you open it up, and it's like dog food. Like, oh, yay, your supply of dog food. I don't even have a dog, but it's great. Okay, so you're like, oh, awesome. But every now and then you open the door, and it's like a new car or, you know, several thousand dollars. And, and even though that I can communicate to you 
the gospel, the good news, how great it is. Just walk through the door. Just walk through the door. The truth is, it takes faith to walk through this door because you really don't know, or at least you think you don't, what's on the other side. And I in no way make light of that decision, and neither does God. But God is on the other side of the door. And what's weird is he does some knocking too. I know it says, if you knock on the door, I will answer and you can come in. That's true, but there's an invitation. There's an invitation to come through the door. And that's what's happening to some of you in here. There's this thing, this pull, this call. And I heard, a, I heard an analogy, and I love this, because I don't really care for religion. I don't really care for American Christianity. But I do love the kingdom of God. And I do love the good news. And a lot of us think, man, to get through this door, I got I to gotta know some, some Bible. I got to, like, go to small group. I got to clean up a little bit. I got to get ready to go into the, I got to, I, there's something I got to do before I go into whatever's over here, right? Who, who used to believe that? Man, you know what? I got, okay, okay, I'm in church. Let me, let me clean my morality up. Let me fix my cussing. Let me stop my drinking. Let me stop my smoking, my snorting, whatever. And you're like, all right, let me, get, let me get dressed up. Which, by the way, I don't enjoy sports coats, but it's Easter, so I'm going to wear one, okay? <laughs> but let me just tell you this. To get through this door, I don't need no dang sports coat. Okay, but that's what people think. Like, oh man, I got what I got to do. And I, I love this is amazing to me. I've never thought of this this way. Is, does anybody remember the story when Jesus is being crucified? There's two guys next to him, two two dudes. One dude's pretty nasty, and and cussing and having a fit, and he's he's upset. But this is this other guy that's like, look, I don't. All I know is the dude in the middle is innocent. And Jesus, he says, hey, um, I've. I heard you're going to paradise, so when you get there, can you, can you remember your boy? That's, that's IV translation. Go, it's kind of the same. Okay, so, and Jesus is like, no sweat. Today, you're going to be in paradise. And we have no re record what the dude says. I just think he goes, like, <laughs> he'd never been to church. He never went to small group. He never heard a Bible lesson. He, he, didn't, he didn't know anything other than this. I don't know. This guy's special. He's innocent. I, now, let's, let's just, he shows up in heaven to the pearly gates. Let's do that. That's what everybody thinks. It's pearly gates, whatever. Okay. And let's say Pete meets him there. He knocks on the door, <laughs> knocks on the gate. And Pete goes, yes. Um... Yeah, I'm here. Pete goes, how'd you get here? Like, the thief goes, I don't know. I was just hanging. <laughs> here I am. Now imagine if Pete cared. Pete doesn't care, but imagine Pete cared and said, well, can you tell me the theology of justification by faith and sanctification? You know what that dude's going to say? No. I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, what small group did you attend to hear the explanation of the gospel that you may enter through the narrow way? Dude, are you not, I was just hanging. <laughs> Say, Pete gets frustrated. He says, well, 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 well why, why am I supposed to let you in? Because the guy in the middle said I could come. <laughs> and that's all I know. And too many of us, people like me, complicate this thing. You don't have to get dressed up, fixed up, stop, start, do whatever. Like Jesus says, I'm the door. Come through me. And he says, all that want to can come by trusting that when I walk through the door, it's going to be all right. Some of us have walked through the door. And the Lord shut the door, and we've been over here a while, but we keep doing this. How you doing? <laughs> you, uh, I know you can't come, but could you, if you could give me some advice <laughs> on how to handle this situation, I would really appreciate it. Oh, okay, so we're going we're gonna to dog cuss them, tell them they're number one. Okay, thank you so much. And you get back over here, and you, you think shadow guy is, is like the voice you need to listen to. 
And Jesus says, no, <laughs> shut the door. You're like a sheep now that knows my voice. Stop listening to the voice of the strange you. That's, that's a stranger now. He's, he's dead. And now you're alive. So, so to all my like brothers and sisters in Christ in here, st stop, stop. Hey, I love Jesus. Hey, I don't, do, can you tell me how to be married? Because she's crazy. Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do, babe. And the, the wife's like, hey, look, oh, oh girl, you know, back in the day, could you help me with my man? Oh, yes, yes, slap him and manipulate him with sex. That's right. If we could just. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why are you asking a person that ruined your life for 20 years? Like, hey, what's up? Why, why not ask the king? You're in his room now. You're in his kingdom. I promise you, that's going to lie to you. This will always lead you into love and faith and joy and peace. But look, there's some of y'all, you, you got to fall out of love with this person. Now, I'm going to be straight with you. I, I've shared this before, um, but some, some first-time guests in here, and this may shock you, but... But then I had to hire a psychologist, not a counselor. We had to have initials to a name. You know what I'm talking about? Like, there's levels. Hey, I got an issue. Go see a counselor. Okay, I'm going to talk through my issues. And then it's like, hey, I'm broken. I need somebody, like, with some initials that can help me. Okay, so went to that person. And unbeknownst to me, I did not realize I was doing what I just told you not to do. Hey, man, how, how are we going to make this happen? Oh, because the shadow side of me was super driven, super hard, didn't want to talk about emotions. What is that? He would ask me, in a council, says, how do you feel? I don't. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? How do you feel about that? I guess I, I don't feel, what are you talking about? That's a waste of time. I got stuff to do. And so, here's what's bad. I hated the grind side of me, but boy, I liked it because it could get stuff done. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like if there is a mountain, we are taking it. I would like for you to go with me, but if you can't, that's okay too because I'm going. And we're going to make some things happen in this world because we're only here for a short time. Now listen, I'm on that side of the door, but I'm listening to the old self. And unbeknownst to me, it's frying me. It's killing me. And my psychologist is like, listen, we have to face the fact that you've operated this way for so long that you believe this is right. You've, you've done a lot. Listen, it's not taking away everything to you, Jesus follower. It's not, yes, you're over here, and you've, and you've got some healing. You got, but there's, there's a conversation you're having that you shouldn't be having. And I was having that conversation. And I couldn't live in joy and peace and patience and kindness and ease. I was on a grind every day. Now listen, I still work hard, but I don't grind. Because his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And the devil, he says, a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And here's what's bad about it. He still wants to steal, kill, and destroy if you're in Christ. And, but the problem is, is he can't do it to you, so he has to talk you into doing it yourself. He wants to tempt you to talk to this thing to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. And now, now you're playing a part in the destruction that Jesus shut the door on. Listen to what Martin Luther King said. The important thing is that the resurrection did occur. See, it's both the cross and the resurrection that allows you to come through the door. The, price, the entry price was paid. The pain to deliver you was finished. And his purpose was fulfilled. And you've been invited by the guy in the middle. You don't have to know everything. You just have to open the door and take the step. He says, listen, he says, the important thing is that the grave is empty. 
The important thing is the fact that Jesus had given himself to certain eternal truths and eternal principles that nobody could crucify or escape. So all the nails in the world could never pierce this truth. All the crosses of the world could never block his love. All the graves in the world could never bury his goodness. There's nothing that stands in your way to the freedom on this side of the door from the darkness that plagues you. Jesus has made a way where there seems to be no way. Now, let me tell you what's on the other side. All that's over here is, is broken, broken hearts, pieces of you that keep falling away that you keep trying to pick up, um, and you want to like get them somewhere. You want to like figure it out. You, you're tired of being broken. You're tired of being busted up. Um, there's a there's like a you ever you know what a loud silence is, and how your mind feels like it's some kind of weird foreign land. And like this this loving this part of you, that's that's a losing game. And you're always going to be one step short if you keep staying here when the door has actually been opened for you. It's not closed. It's not locked. It's not unapproachable. You just got to take the step of faith by losing your love for this person and falling in love with the king in the kingdom. 